Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Citizen NFL Podcast. No, we haven't been canceled yet. <laughs> I'm your host, Justin Ritzel. As always, joined by Robert Harding and Chris Shearer. Robert. Indeed. Welcome to uh, the irrelevancy of your team not not playing anymore. Yeah, yeah. How does it feel? Nice, nice to join you guys again. Uh, it's you know, been a while since I had this feeling, so... So can we, uh, based on the Bills' performance on Sunday, do we get to rescind the the playoff appearance? Like, should they just should they extend that streak another year or no thanks? Because they, <laughs> I mean, they didn't quite show up. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean the the difference in that game was uh, one drive really. The uh, uh, Jaguars went down the field, scored a touchdown on fourth and goal, and. That was that. That was the difference. Uh, certainly Tyrod Taylor wasn't going to bring them back at that point, so it is what it is, as they say. Now, you guys watched the game together? Yeah. We did. Yeah. And uh, Unlike some people, I am okay watching athletic competitions in the presence of other companies. So. You do know that when the Dolphins <laughs> made the playoffs this year, I actually went to the game. You okay. do remember that. Yes, I do remember yeah. that. Yeah. But in the lead-up before, you were refusing to... Watch right. Well, geez. Well, why would I want to not do that? <laughs> why? Because I don't want to get trolled for three and a half hours while my team loses. Come on. All things I can do on Twitter, my friend. Yeah. Well, <laughs> when I'm at the stadium, it's kind of tough to keep track on Twitter. Like I said, on my home computer. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to give you that opportunity. Okay. But uh, but yeah yeah it was a fun fun time. Chris got some free food out of the deal. Wasn't too. Oh bad. whoa whoa whoa! <laughs> I got some free food out of it. I didn't see you abstaining from the buffet. I went up a couple times. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Not gonna lie, but yeah, no, it was uh, it was good to watch a Bills playoff game again. It's been a while. The Music City Miracle being the last uh, the last game, uh, last playoff game, uh, been able to watch. So at least they made it. You know, no no rescinding needed. Get that drought over with. Focus on improving the team. That's what I say. You guys know we now live in a world where Blake Bortles is undefeated in the postseason. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was that was a um, it was both pathetic quarterbacking and uh, pathetic defense in the twenty first century when mobile quarterbacks are more of a thing. You know, Bortles is certainly uh, uh, versatile enough that he can get outside the pocket and run, and the Bills just didn't have an answer for it. Um, they should have. That was just poor coaching on their part. It's an example of why I hate using win loss record for quarterbacks. Because mm-hmm. if you can't even throw for like a hundred yards, yeah. then you don't deserve to <laughs> no, earn any not. any credit for the win. When you no. run for more yards than you passed for, certainly yes, it was by one yard. But still, when when your rushing total exceeds your passing total, uh, I don't know what that. That's like a college stat. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to think of a more pathetic performance by a quarterback and. Not even just in a winning scenario in any game in recent memory. I know uh, Joe Webb started a, a playoff game a few years back, but yeah, well, know, Tim Tim Tebow had a couple. But well, the the Steelers Super Bowl went over the Seahawks. Big Ben had a terrible game. Mm-hmm. Uh, granted, he hit the century mark, but uh, you know he he did not play well in that game, and uh, the Steelers won. So it was you know at that point it was irrelevant. You know he. His play didn't affect the outcome of the game, but uh, uh, that's, I mean, it wasn't even close to being as bad as Bortles was on, on, on Sunday, so, um, but he won in part because of that defense, so. So, uh, we'll just, uh, we'll close it up with the Bills here. Um, obviously, the big question mark this offseason is going to be, what do you do with Tyrod? Mm-hmm. Uh Chris, you think the Bills should move on or yes. give them another shot? Absolutely. I think that that game really showed that how desperately they need a new quarterback. I mean, look, Tyrod Taylor played his tail off, 
And God, he was concussed at the end of the game. I mean, he took a nasty shot there at the end. Took but, a couple of it during the game. Yeah, I mean, he really looked. The guy's got guts. He plays hard. He gives 100%. You can't fault him for that. But he's, I mean, Bills fans have seen enough of Tyrod Taylor that they know that he is not the long term answer at quarterback. They, they're going to have to draft somebody. Now, whether the Bills decide they're going to package their two consecutive first round picks and try to move up or something, mm-hmm. we'll see. Is free agency uh, a possibility? I don't think so. I don't think there's, I mean, Kirk Cousins is not going to Buffalo if he's even available. And then the other free agent quarterbacks, I don't think anybody really stands out. But well, Al- Alex Smith will be available too? Yeah, possibility. Yeah, um, that is true. And, and he could be a good fit for the Bills. I mean, that's the kind of, it seems like that's the kind of offense they want to run. Uh, but that being said, I, I think that the Bills will draft the quarterback first. And uh, I think they, they need to move on from Tyrod Taylor. I mean, I think there's a chance they could bring him back next year more as like a. Just to hold hold the you know hold the fort down, keep the seat warm until the rookie's ready, and then we all know they drafted Peterman last uh, last year in the fifth round, and and well look yeah but you know something, I'll say this, you can't judge that guy on one game, okay? I'm you not really can't. Well, you judging went, him on you multiple went, games. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> I I just think that he need if he's gonna if you're gonna see whether he's your actual long term answer, you need to let him be named the starter in preseason. Get him all the first team reps in per, in preseason in the beginning of the season and and see what happens. Okay. That being said, on the Bills, I still draft their quarterback pretty high. I, I would say so. Yes. <laughs> Wait. So so Robert, I'm, I'm going to give you three aspects of the Bills offense, and I want you to tell me rank them if you if you care to. Uh, in what order are they to blame for the offensive struggles against okay. Jacksonville? Option number one. Tyrod Taylor. Mm-hmm. Option number two is just the wide receiving core. Option number three, uh, Rick Dennison, the <laughs> offensive coordinator oh. and, and play caller. Oh, man. This is a tough one. It's, um, it's almost like a chicken and the egg argument. Like, yeah. well, you know, what. I mean, I would have to say I would put Dennison one, and, and here's why. You know, throughout this season, he has done his best to try and force not just Tyrod Taylor, but the Bills offense in general to play in his system. He has not been willing, it seems, to build around the talent that he has, which most good coaches do. Um, Of course, he's not most good coaches. Uh, He has tried to force this issue with his scheme, his, you know, his approach, and it just didn't work, and his play calling is, is garbage. Uh, it's, it, he's a dog play caller, as Chris would, might say. Um, but, you know, you, you certainly can't let Tyrod Taylor off the hook because there were throws that he missed. You know, that's nothing on Rick Dennison. That's, that's executing, and that's up to the players. And um, certainly you want the coaching staff uh, to put the players in the right position, but when you've got receivers that have a step and you're missing throws I think of that throw to Deontay Thompson uh, maybe in the third fourth quarter something like that um, that he missed and that would have been a big gain if he was accurate Um, but uh, but yeah I mean I think if if the Bills do the right thing going into 2018 they move on from Dennison uh, because the other concern about Dennison is whether he can develop a young quarterback or not and his experience with Tyrod Taylor certainly would make me nervous if I'm Sean McDermott. And Peterman. And Peterman, yeah. And so, uh, you know, if you're going to draft a guy to come in, uh, certainly in the first round, and be, you know, your your future franchise quarterback or your, your present franchise quarterback, you're not going to want Rick Dennison on the on the staff. You're, you need a different offensive coordinator. So they have to address both those positions. Um, the receiving core... I mean, it was certainly a banged-up unit. Was it the best that they could have given Tyrod Taylor? Certainly not. Uh, you know, Zay Jones was inconsistent in his, in his rookie year. Uh, Kelvin Benjamin was hurt. Um, you know, Deontay Thompson, you know, he's he's good, but he's not number one, number two receiver type material. So, uh, and, of course, you had Charles Clay, who, again, you know, he was inconsistent too. So, I mean... Yes, they need to bolster the receiving core for sure, but I mean, to me, the way that that game played out, there there were throws to be had, but 
Taylor didn't make them. And then you look at some of the play calling, uh, certainly questionable. So I think those two pieces need to be addressed before you get to the receivers. Uh, I'm sure all, all three of us uh, have certain plays, and you could say this about any football fan, certain plays that uh, we'll watch our team and they'll run uh, maybe once or twice a game, but they do it every week, mm-hmm. and it never works, and you're just like, why don't you just throw that play in the trash? For example, mine is mine is like a, a fullback dive on like <laughs> a third and short. <laughs> like when the Packers had John Kuhn and they needed, uh, there's a funny saying, some, one of the Packers uh, writers I follow on Twitter said, um, if you need two yards, John Kuhn will get you two yards. If you need four yards, John Kuhn will get you two yards. <laughs> <laughs> now for Chris, I'm sure it's probably any past Jay Cutler throws. Bubble, he's... <laughs> bubble screen, bubble, <laughs> bubble screen. screen. Yeah. Dolphin um, fans hate bubble screens. Robert, for you, I imagine it's got to be the second and long handoffs to to Mike Tolbert. Oh my goodness! It's it's Exhibit A in the case against Dennison. This was a year long thing. He never, he rarely would abandon that. You put Tolbert out there. You know, Lashawn McCoy goes out there. Gets a gets a big gain, you know. Maybe they try passing on first down. It goes nowhere. It's second and ten. Hand off to Tolbert for no gain or a loss. What are we doing here? What is this? Uh, it's it's dog play calling. I I I'm telling you, it's terrible. It's terrible. All right. So <laughs> the Bills, you know, all the players will be heading to beaches for the off season. They'll be getting out their fishing poles, their golf clubs. They're done. The Jaguars are not done. They will be traveling up to Pittsburgh to face the mighty Steelers. For their massacre against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, Chris, <laughs> last time these two teams met in Pittsburgh earlier this season. This is true. The Jaguars waltzed up to Pittsburgh and picked off Ben Roethlisberger five times. Five times. I believe that was also the game where Roethlisberger told the media afterwards, maybe I don't have it anymore. Yeah. Uh Obviously, the Steelers have picked it up since then. Mm-hmm. Finished thirteen and three. Uh, are you giving the Jags any chance to go up and do it again? No, no, none, <laughs> no. Seriously, because they don't have the offense. I mean, they only scored ten points. Okay, uh, Blake they Bortles picked off five as, times. As bad as Tyrod Taylor played, Blake Bortles was just as horrible. I mean, that was a dog game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think lightning's going to strike twice. I think the Steelers, that was a wake-up call. It's motivation. I mean, I look, Tomlin doesn't need to tell these guys, hey, remember what happened the last time they came up here? They kicked our asses. Excuse my French. Um, <laughs> so I think that the, the Steelers are going to be pretty motivated, and I think is going to be pretty motivated. There's no way is going to throw five picks again. No way, okay? I think if the Steelers are smart, they're going to run the football with Le'Veon Bell. And, and that's how you win playoff games. You control the ball, keep the other team's offense off the field. Steelers are going to run the football. Now, that being said, Jacksonville is a very good defense. I mean, uh, I mean, it's going to be tough to run the football. And they will have to throw the ball occasionally, but there's no way Roethlisberger gets picked off five times. I, I don't think this game will be uh, that close. I think the Steelers are going to win by at least ten points. Obviously, they've only been really at this level for a year, but... That that Saxonville defense. Are are you ready to put them on a level of maybe the Seahawks of the last few years? Are, are no. they that good? Or you do you, you got to see more? You got you got to see. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every every team can have a good year. You know, we got to see if they can do it again next year. That being said, that Jacksonville defense is very good right now. I mean, they are playing excellent, excellent defense. So, um, you know, I I think Pittsburgh will struggle at times, but I think, like I said, from having been a person who has actually sat. In Heinz Field for a Steelers playoff game, it is uh, a crazy atmosphere. It is a tough atmosphere for the visiting team, and uh, I think Jacksonville is—they're uh, going to struggle, no doubt about it. Like I said, Blake Bortles. I mean, you know, that's all you got to say. It's—I just don't see their their defense being able to overcome the lack of the offense. So we'll see. Robert uh, Antonio Brown hasn't played in a few weeks. Mm-hmm. Apparently, he's going to be good to go. Yeah. Uh, any concern about rust for AB? No, I think I. I think uh, uh, given, um, you know, every, their, their whole team had a week off last week. You know, he, he was obviously banged up for the last couple weeks of the regular season. But, uh, you know, I think he'll, he'll get right back out there and, uh, uh, and be his old self. Uh, you know, it's not that long of a period. 
uh, really. It's not like he was out for half the season or anything. You know, certainly he was around the team for the, the last uh, regular season games, and, and he's gone through the process. But, um, you know, I, I think I think he'll be okay. I think the Steelers' offense will be running at full speed uh, against the Jag- uh, Jaguars' defense. So, you know, we'll... We'll see what happens, but uh, you know I think I think Brown will be fine on Sunday. Let's stay in the AFC. To I think what many would say is a bit of a dog matchup, the matchup that really nobody saw coming. <laughs> Tennessee Titans and not the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, will be traveling up to Foxborough to face the uh, I'm sure heavily favored Patriots. Yeah. Um, Again, do you do you give Tennessee and AFC South team any chance to uh, go into New England and surprise anybody? Nope, not a chance. You don't think Mariota's going to throw some touchdown passes to himself? He could throw three touchdown passes to himself, and they'll still lose by 20. Book it. <laughs> yeah, book it. <laughs> I just, the, the Patriots, the way uh, they've been playing, especially uh, defensively, um, you know Tennessee, uh, they got they got lucky. Not only did they, uh, not only did they, not only were they playing Andy Reid, but they had Jeff Triplett officiating, and so they got they got some good calls that went their way. Um, so, you know they they lucked out. They won an Arrowhead. Now they get to go to Foxborough, and uh, it's going to be a different outcome for sure. Chris, I I, I assume that you agree. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it, the rare valid. There, it would, it would be. I would love nothing. Nobody would love to see the Patriots. You know, Patriots lose, and I would. I mean, I, we all would love to see the Patriots lose. We're tired of the Patriots, okay? But that being said, I mean, come on, Tennessee is not going into Foxborough and beating New England in the playoff game, okay? Unless Tom Brady actually looks forty years old, okay? That, that's the only chance I give them. I mean, look. Tight, the Titans have a solid defense. They do. I mean, Dick LeBeau, man. I mean, this is a guy who's been putting out quality defense as well before you guys were born and since I was a little kid. So this guy definitely knows, uh, you know, how to uh, get the most out of his um, his players and everything on defense. But the, it's just, it's the lack of offense. That's what's really going to hurt um, Tennessee. And, and not like New England has a great defense either, but... Uh, and again, New England playing at home, it's just one of those things that I just think that New England is just too experienced, too much talent, and uh, it, it will be New England winning at least by 14 points on, on Sunday, or Saturday. Yes, yeah, Saturday. I'm sorry, Saturday. So, yes. This, this needs to be said. Talking to Chris about this yesterday. The Patriots have played a divisional round game every year since 2010. I think they're on like a six-year streak of making it to the AFC Championship. And obviously, you know, you have to win in the regular season to earn the top seeds they get Mm -hmm. to, you know, basically face the lesser teams. But the the quarterbacks that the Patriots have been able to face in the divisional round since 2010 Mm -hmm. is an absolute joke. Yeah, they've been lucky. (laughs) Let me me read off. I'm not even reading. I'm doing it from memory because this is how mad it made me. These are the quarterbacks the Patriots have faced. Mark Sanchez. Yeah. yeah. Tim Tebow. <laughs> Joe Flacco. Brock Osweiler. Marcus Mariota this year. Yeah. And then they faced uh, Alex Smith, who's, you know, I think everybody has their own opinion on him. Obviously not a great quarterback, maybe a good one. And then Andrew Luck, who is probably the best of the bunch. Up, yeah. But... I mean that is like the games against Tebow and Osweiler are basically like free wins. <laughs> and then Mark Mark Sanchez of all people in 2010 went into Foxborough and this is another example of why quarterback win loss is stupid. Went in and beat the Patriots. Yeah. Yeah, Brady played like crap and their defense played good the Jets, not Mark Sanchez. Yeah. So that just needs to be said that as great as the Patriots have been They've also been very fortunate with who they've played and when they've played them. Well, it's a it's a product of the the AFC and just how weak of a conference it's been for so long. Like that's that's one thing about the Patriots run that you know people don't really talk about is 
yeah, they've they've been a great team for a long time, but they also haven't had a ton of competition either. You know, Peyton Manning's Colts, uh, you know, was probably the closest thing they came, and look how many times they lost to the Patriots. Well, and I think that so. the biggest criticism of Peyton Manning during his career is that he his play dipped in the postseason, pretty yeah. pretty uh, you know, in a pretty big fashion. So, and then obviously they've owned they pretty much own the Steelers. Yeah. So you can give give them that one, but. Yeah, it's pretty sad. Switch over to the NFC. We'll start with uh, another kind of, I guess, weak matchup. Could have been a fun matchup, if not for uh, Carson Wentz injuring his knee. Um, The Falcons, I think, uh, Chris, you you picked them last week, didn't you? Picked them to go in and beat the Rams? Uh, No, I actually had picked the Rams. Oh, okay. I was, you know, I'll tell you, I was thinking about it. I mean, it definitely was on my mind. I mean, I considered it, but... I just figured the Rams' offense was just too good, you know. I, I agree. I, I, I agree. I, I thought the Rams were going to take care of business. And I th- and Atlanta. I mean, look, they their defense was very good. They did an excellent job of uh, shutting down the Rams. And um, I mean, look, the Rams were averaging twenty nine point nine points a game, and when they walk away with thirteen at the end of the night, I mean, that's that's pretty darn good. So uh, I, I guess I'm on the Falcons bandwagon, so to speak. Now, you give. Any chance to the Eagles with with Nick Foles at home? Well, it's, it's going to be their defense. I was saying this to Robert in the in the in our picks videos that for the for the Eagles to have any chance, their defense has to play very good, and they've got to really get the Matt Ryan. Uh, we'll see what happens, but you know, I mean, look, the Eagles are going to be home. The crowd is going to be up. They could win. They could win the game. I mean, look, we we all know that anything can happen in the playoffs. There could be an injury. There could be a couple turnovers. There could be bad officiating. I mean, it doesn't take much to sway a game's uh, outcome, okay? Uh, but like I said, that being said, I, I, I like Atlanta. I mean, they're playoff tested, and I think they're motivated by what happened last year. And, um, and, and like I said, Nick Foles is not Carson Wentz. So I'm, I'm, going with, I'm going with the Falcons. The hot take of the year. I'll say. Nick Foles isn't Carson Wentz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, too, am, am going with the Falcons uh, in this game. You know, the, the Foles factor can't be overlooked. He's just not the same level of quarterback as Carson Wentz. And the other thing that can't be overlooked is that Falcons defense. I mean, to go into L.A. and uh, make the Rams look ordinary uh, certainly is an achievement. And they've just been looking good down the stretch. And uh, that's, that's going to be key for them because the Falcons offense isn't what it was last year. And so to have that defense playing well and, you know, making – making some good plays, uh, getting some big plays on, on offense when they can. Uh, it's going to be gonna be big for them down uh, this time of year. So. so I think the matchup we're all waiting for Indeed. this weekend, the New Orleans Saints, yeah. mm-hmm. fresh off completing a season sweep over those poor Carolina Panthers. They almost choked it away. Chris's favorite word, choked it away. <laughs> Managed to hold on, beat the Panthers for the third time. Now they get to go to Minnesota to face the second-seeded Vikings, who, considering the state of the Eagles, might be the uh, might be the top team in the NFC. Um, guys, just what what are you looking forward to the most about about this matchup? Shall I go first? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, to me, it's the uh, uh, seeing this rematch play out. Uh, they, of course, played in week one. Uh, Vikings won. Um, obviously, uh, you know, two two different teams from that point. I mean, the Vikings uh, had Sam Bradford for that game. Now they have Case Keenum, who's been been a surprise. He's played very well at, uh, as the starting quarterback for them. Uh, Vikings defense, stout, you know, pretty good. Not Jacksonville good, but, you know, still pretty good defense. And then you have the Saints with... The two-headed monster, Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara, you know, those two are going to create problems for any defense, uh, even one that's as good as the Vikings. So uh, I I like the Saints in this game uh, as much as it pains me. I'd, I'd love to see the Vikings host the Super Bowl. I think it would be great. The Packers fan in the room doesn't like that idea. <laughs> but, uh, um, but I you know, the way that the Saints have been playing, especially with the defense that they have now, um, and, and the fact that Drew Brees, he's an experienced playoff quarterback. He's won a Super Bowl. He's been in these situations before. 
that's something that Case Keenum really doesn't have. Um, that's gonna, I think that's gonna count for something in this game. And you're looking to me. All right. Well, listen. I, I really think that <laughs> got to- Tommy Texter over here. Yeah. No, I'm catching up on Twitter. Uh, listen, Minnesota. This is one of those. It's like Kansas City. They're just. It's a team that just cannot get over the hump. They just. They just find a way to lose games in the playoffs. But this year's different. I really have a good feeling about them. Again, their defense, I think, is solid. They're going to have home fields. I believe this is their first playoff game in their new stadium. Is it? That's the second year of the stadium. And, uh, yeah. So I, I really like them in this game. I mean, look, New Orleans is not a great road team usually, okay? And they struggle on the road. That's true. And uh, Minnesota did beat New Orleans in week one, which I know was 100 years ago. I give you that. But, um, but still, Minis- I mean, I really think Minnesota is – this is going to be a close game. It's going to come down – it's going to be a three-point game, I believe. But I like the Vikings – Keep the dream alive. And, again, if Atlanta does beat uh, Philadelphia, we're going to have an Atlanta at Minnesota NFC Championship game. And I believe it's 20 years after the the Vikings and the, and the Falcons played in the NFC Championship game where uh, Anderson, the former Syracuse kicker, um, Whose first name I'm I'm forgetting. Gary, Gary. Gary there we go. Had missed the, the kick, chip shot. Had missed field the kick goal. all year. Yeah, yeah. He had missed the kick all year. He missed the chip shot. Well, it wasn't a chip shot. It was like a forty. Really, it's four. Okay, it wasn't. Okay, sorry. It sorry. Was a, it was a Norwood level miss. Sorry, Gary, yeah. but it was inside in a dome though. I mean, that's one of the things. It yeah. wasn't like he was kicking outdoors off grass like Norwood. I think Norwood gets a bum rap sometimes. But anyways, uh, but we could have a rematch. That's a like, development. <laughs> what? I've never had anything against Norwood, man. Feel bad for the guy. Got the shaft, um, but we could have a rematch of that classic NSC championship game. Twenty years, literally twenty years to the date and the week, and uh, and into the same place too. I mean, the same you know city, obviously, not the same stadium, but uh, it's it's going to be fun. I mean, I think that Minnesota and Atlanta could be a very fun NFC championship game if, if that's what happens. I mean, really, we could have. Assuming the Eagles lose, which I kind of feel bad because they would they would have been a fun team. I know I would have been pulling for them to make a run. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, you know, as we said with Nick Foles, um, not so much. But I mean, if the Saints win and they play the Falcons, that's you know, oh, NF- yeah. NFC matchup South. there that'll yeah. guarantee that for the third straight year, uh, the NFC South will represent the conference in, in the Super Bowl. So yeah. uh, I, I'm curious on. Your guys' take on one thing. Um, Drew Brees, I think last week he passed for over 300 yards. Only the, uh, I think he ranks third all time in 300 yard passing games in the playoffs. Uh, obviously, one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever do it. Um, you know, his passing yardage numbers are insane. Where do you think, it seems like Brees has kind of been almost a f- forgotten a little bit in this era of. Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and Aaron Rodgers that he's kind of like on the cusp of in that conversation, but not really because mm, where, like where where do you think Breeze stands in in the pantheon of oh boy of the quarterbacks I, of this era? I, I disagree with you a little bit, Justin. I I think Drew Brees gets plenty of of attention. Okay. Uh, really? I mean, yeah, Spoken you do. like a true Dolphins well, fan no, you do. whose team no, didn't sign him. I know. Years ago. And they didn't draft him either. It's still, <laughs> no. I think it's a choke signing. Wow, it was, it was a dog unsigning. To be honest with we, you, we can agree that but, uh, Dante Culpepper is not uh, in the conversation. Don't right? even get me going Ouch. on that oh, one. Man. So, listen, I think that Drew Brees has always been ranked as one of the best quarterbacks in the league. I mean, look, Tom Brady, he's got five rings. That's the number one reason. Okay, then we look at Peyton Manning. He's got two rings, and and he put up great numbers. I mean. Drew Brees has one ring, and I understand it's. It, 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 we all know it's very difficult to get one ring. I think all of us would literally trade uh, almost anything to see our teams win one championship. Well, you've got a couple in the last few years. I, I've seen mine win. Right, yeah. So. so, but for Robert and I, I mean, we literally would, I think we would trade a year off our lives to see our teams win the Super Bowl. Speak for yourself. Well, you're, you're a little more seasoned than I am. No, okay. <laughs> seasoned. What am I, steak? Uh, so... I, I think Drew Brees is one of the best ever. I mean, the numbers speak it. The, the, look, the years that he has put up, amazing numbers. I mean, it's been... Was that a sarcastic cough or a legitimate cough? No, legitimate cough. Okay. 
he's put up amazing numbers now for more than for more than a decade, and I think he ranks as one of the best ever. And when he retires, I mean, he'll be in the top five basically in every major passing category. And I think that if he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. I don't know what else you can say about the guy. I think he gets plenty of respect, and, and he's earned it. So, I don't think he gets respect, though, <clears throat> from the standpoint of uh, being in that group. You know, with Brady and Manny and Rodgers, like, they were considered kind of the three-headed monster. And Breeze is sometimes forgotten. You know, everybody knows he's a great quarterback, and he's Super Bowl champion and all this other stuff, but... It's easier to forget, especially up until this season when the Saints didn't do so well. But Brees still played pretty good. Um, but, uh, you know, when your team's not winning, it's easy for people to just kind of be like, oh, you know. Robert's getting choked up about it. <laughs> no, I'm like, well, that's definitely went down the wrong no, pipe. I know. It's, it's starting to come back. Yeah. <laughs> but that, uh, that, That's the thing with him is it's like he puts up all these gaudy numbers and yet it's, not good enough for his team to get in the playoffs. I mean, I know well, you didn't have a defense. I mean, quarterback is one position on the field. It's an important position. So it's like, do you, do you, um, are those stats kind of meaningless because well, he didn't do anything, or is it just really he's was caught in an unfortunate scenario where Rob Ryan was the defensive coordinator for yeah. a few years and yeah. Well, I think I think it shows um, just how you know one thing i will say is that it's easy to look at some of the yardage numbers and it's a bit misleading like a 5000 yard season these days you know which breeze has had a few of those it doesn't it doesn't mean as much as it once did it's a lot easier in today's nfl to do that and um you know the i think one thing that you have to focus on with breeze is that yeah while he was good while he was putting up gaudy numbers and his team was losing he didn't have a run game like he does now, and he doesn't have the he didn't have the defense that's that certainly improved this year. Um, you know, Rob Ryan, as you mentioned, was the coordinator for a while. Um, that defense for for many years, even without Rob Ryan, was garbage. Um, so uh, they you know they've bounced back. You know, they certainly improved. I think in twenty sixteen, improved in twenty seventeen. So. Uh, that's that's a big reason why they're they're certainly more competitive uh, this season. All right, Chris, I'm just gonna I'm gonna let you let you air out your thoughts on this guy because anyone who knows you knows that you're not a big fan. But Alabama won college football playoff <laughs> championship. Wow. <laughs> Nick Nick Saban wins another <laughs> <Your boy. laughs> another college championship. Chris, you uh, you obviously have a bone to pick with Nick Saban. Not just, really. Just, I've, uh, I've moved just, on. Just vent. Just I've, give I've, it to I've, us. I've moved on. It's it's ancient history now. It's been eleven years. I don't think you've moved on though. No, I think I've, I've any, moved anytime on. you have a chance look, to just look, throw a little I, jab in I there I at root, Saban. Do I root for Alabama? Hell no. <laughs> no, I don't root for Alabama. I still wish. I wish. Still wish Georgia had won that game on Monday night. But, I mean, let's put it this way. How many titles has he won? Five? Five titles? Uh, six, I think. Six? Five with, L- well, I don't five know. with, it, one with LSU. I think he won with LSU, yeah. Then five, five with five. Alabama. I mean, it's, what can you say? I mean, the guy, he's a hell of a recruiter. I mean, he gets the best players. And in college sports, usually the teams with the most talent win. And the most money in envelopes. Well, I ain't going there, man. <laughs> I don't know about that. But Alabama gets the best talent. Yeah. And uh, they win, and I don't think you got to be the best coach in the history of uh, football to win with that much talent. But Saban, you know, he recruits it and he gets it and he wins. You can't take that away from him. So I'm not, I'm not angry or anything like that. I'm not like you know spitting at the bit here. But uh, you know, they won. You tip your cap to them and you move on. So sorry to, sorry to disappoint you there. So in in order. Tell me which of these guys you dislike the least. Nick Saban, the doctor who's went totally unnamed that failed Drew Brees' shoulder, yeah. preventing him from coming to the Dolphins, or uh, Jimmy Johnson, another former <laughs> Dolphins coach. Which one I like the Yeah, like what's your order of, ha- order? of hatred towards all of them? Uh, I would say that uh, the doctors are number one because it wasn't like they lied or... You know, were intentional. They they tried to 
you know, be objective. Number one in, in terms of they, least, they body the least. Like Bobby the least. Number two is Nick Saban. He's a liar. We we, we know that. <laughs> there's, what? There's, there's the what? fire. There's, there's what? the fire. What, what part of, like, I'm not going to be the Alabama coach, don't you get? I mean, that's a lie. He lied. And and I get why he lied, because it would have been more, it was supposed to say no comment or, you know, he had a lie. I give you that, okay? Um, but to me, Jimmy Johnson, because he's a quitter. He, he quit. You know, and uh, I don't forgive him for that because he basically pushed out Don Shula. He wanted the Dolphins' job because you know he, he loves Miami and he's got his he's got his place in Key West and uh, you know he thought he could just come in and just oh yeah I'm Jimmy Johnson and just everybody was just going to bow to him and uh, they were going to win, and then he realized oh this is as easy as it looks I got to put in some real work here, and then it's like you know. I'm not sure if I want to do this anymore. And then he quit. And I just, it bothers me. And it will always bother me. He's a quitter. He does not deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. Does not deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. Wow. No. Scorching. Not Scorching. Long, not enough, not a long enough body of work. I mean, seriously. Two how many Super years? Bowls. It, so did Tom Flores. <laughs> I don't see him in the, in the Hall of Fame. Really. I mean, there's... George Seifert, I think, won a pair of Super Bowls, didn't he? Yes. He's not going in the Hall of Fame. He should. Because, look, Jimmy did a great job rebuilding the Cowboys. I'll tip my cap to him on that one. And, and if Jerry Jones wasn't a moron, Jimmy would have stayed there and probably won another couple Super Bowls probably. But you got those Texas-sized egos there, you know, and then boom. So Jimmy just, you know, he goes back to the Fox booth, and it's like, uh, you know, I'd like the coach in Miami. The next thing you know, Shul's getting pushed out after 25 years. You know, I'm sorry. That is, and then he gets the job, and four years later, I quit. And by the way, Dave wants that's going to take over for me. Yeah, let's include Dave on that list too. Because <laughs> Dave is the guy that could have. Feel, feel free to throw him in, in the rankings. He could have drafted Drew Brees in 2001. Instead, he picked Jamar Fletcher, a safety. Okay, think about Who? that. <laughs> Jamar Fletcher. Now, Dave Wanstead was on the radio in Miami recently, and he actually admitted, yeah, I was wrong. I made a mistake. I should have picked Drew Brees. Thanks, Dave. I'm glad you finally had the guts to admit it after all these years. But, no, Jimmy's number one on the hate list. Wait, why, why did Brees slip anyway? Like, was it just because he he's short? That was part of it, yeah. Yeah. The draft being what the draft is, the... You know he's he's six foot tall. Yeah. Some say that that's maybe a slight exaggeration, yeah. but you know he's listed as six foot. And as as we know, I mean, draft being the same now as it is was then. You know they they want their quarterbacks. You know six three, six four, yeah. six five. If you have small hands, whatever. You and, know all these and, things make a difference. And, in the draft. and remember but, this, Drew. You guys may not remember this, but I do. Drew Brees struggled his first three years. He was drafted in 01. He, he wasn't the same quarterback that and, he is And he now. struggled in 01, 02, and 03 that the Chargers picked. Phil Rivers, yeah. In 2004. And then all of a sudden, Drew Brees, I'm sorry, yeah, Drew Brees lit it up. And then he got hurt in the last game. And then, of course, the, the Chargers decided to keep Phillip Rivers, which hindsight was a very smart thing to do the whole process of drafting Phillip Rivers in the first round in 04. I can't remember who the GM was. Maybe it was Bobby Beathard. That's a possibility. But that was a very smart decision. And uh, I, you know, like I said, I just I wish Miami just drafted Drew Brees back in two thousand one and stuck with them, and they would have been rewarded, hopefully. But it didn't happen. Failing to think of any other legendary hated Miami figures that Chris might add to his list, but I think those uh, those four might be it. <laughs> Those are the big ones. I mean, there's minor characters over the years, but you know, you live long enough, you Who, get your list. Who's the, who's the kicker in Ace Ventura? Oh, Ray Finkel. Ray Finkel. Yeah. Which funny because they uh, they used uh, the and if you watch that movie, the video they use in the game, the game scenes where they actually use like was I believe it was Uwe, wait. Will Will Robert think this is funny or Uwe von Shaman? <laughs> Uwe von Shaman was the Dolphins kicker who had two kicks blocked by. Uh, Kellen Winslow in that classic 1982, January 2nd, 1982, AFC uh, divisional playoff game. That one Miami was losing 24 nothing. came back, took the lead 
Tony Nathan fumbled the ball inside the Chargers 20 late when Miami was going, would have been the, the score, it would have put them up by two scores. Chargers come back, score at the, near the end of the game. Miami gets the ball back, drives down the field, last second field goal blocked. Game goes overtime. Uh, Ralph Bernerska, see, kickers had better names back then. Uh, Ralph Bernerska, the Chargers kicker, <laughs> missed a chip shot in overtime. Miami gets the ball back, goes back down the field. Uwe Von Schaman with another chance to win it gets blocked again. And then Miami ended up losing. So that one broke my heart. I can't believe you say that when we live in an era where Young Way Ku was kicking field goals. Yeah. Um, See, I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna say the footage was from Norwood. I'll say this: if you guys, the, the whole game is on YouTube. If you, ever, I mean, even knowing the outcome, if you ever want to see a really good NFL game from the past, go watch that that Chargers Dolphins playoff game. It is, I mean, and I'm biased because I'm a Dolphins fan, but ir- regardless, it is one of the best football games you will ever watch. It is an amazing game from uh, from beginning to end. The way that game just the the flow of it. It was just an amazing game. A lot of it, great individual performances. And it, it, seriously, you should watch it sometime on YouTube. You know Ace Ventura is a comedy when, at the end, the Dolphins are hosting a Super Bowl game and playing in it. <laughs> well, it, it was easy for them to get the stadium for all that stuff. I mean, they kind of needed a, uh, you know, it was a good literary device, I guess, to move the plot. Uh, Snowflake the Dolphin. Yeah. All right. We'll close up shop there after Dolphin Central Talk. See, that's what we got to talk Dolphins, and that gets Chris to open up. So next, not, next week, it'll be the future of Jay Culler. Come back next week for, for chatter about Jarvis Landry's there contract. Go. I know. There we go. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what's dominating my Twitter feed 14 right now. million reasons why Chris is not happy. Yeah, I'm telling you, if you go on my Twitter feed, you will see Jarvis Landry tweets. I'm serious. I mean, look, 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 look at this tweet right here. Read that. The top one? This yeah, is, the one is, that says James. That's yeah. That this one right is there. great audio. Yeah. Uh, this is my point. Some people ragged him because he didn't score TDs. This year he scored TDs with J. Effing Cutler. Uh, didn't actually say effing. <laughs> uh, do what you should have been doing months ago and pay the man. Yeah. See. Hashtag. Uh, what is it? Landry Land- gang gang. Landry gang gang. Yeah, that's the hot Twitter hashtag. Oh. Yeah. Well. Tsh- yeah, give him fifteen million just yeah. for that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what's on my that's my Twitter timeline. It's all Jarvis Landry. It is without a doubt the hottest topic amongst Dolphin fans is Jarvis Landry. So, well, it sure is in the playoffs. Oh, and I'm out. <laughs> I don't see your team playing this weekend, pal. <laughs> hey, they made it. Hey, 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 hey! Top six. Who scored the last touchdown for the Bills in a playoff game? The last touchdown? Yeah, the last person to score a touchdown in a Bills playoff game. <laughs> Come on. You should know it's this. To, uh, it's going back to the Tennessee game. Right, it's going back to score the touchdown <gasps> just before the Music City Miracle. Who well, scored no, it? They kicked a field goal. Before. Oh, they kicked a field goal? Okay, yeah. so who scored the touchdown before that? I can't remember. Yeah. There we go, baby. <laughs> That's how long it's been. You think the listeners can tell that we didn't have an outline for the podcast this week? <laughs> All right. Well, maybe next week Robert will be able to look up uh, who scored that last touchdown in playoff Probably. history for the Bills. Just make it up. Until then, you'll all have to wait patiently. We'll be back next week to talk championship week. So, for Robert Harding and Chris Shearer, I'm Justin Ritzel signing off. We'll catch you next time.